Hello Laravel friends, we are back with weekly videos about what's new in the world of Laravel and I will be your host. It's good to see you. Today we're going to discuss should this patch after commit, chop batches inside chains and more. Let's go. Sometimes you do not want to dispatch an event if the current database transaction fails which was currently not so easy to do. But now it is, let me show you. In Laravel, we do have chains and we do have batches for our jobs. So within a chain, this means all jobs would be run in this exact order, first releasing our first podcast and then releasing our second podcast. With batches, it would be different because these two jobs would run in parallel. These are great two features that we already have for a while in Laravel, but now we can combine them. Let me show you. And what we have here now is this new structure where we first have a chain and in this chain we have two batches. And this is now the new feature, this wasn't possible before. And the cool thing about this is that we can combine the best of those two features. So first in this chain, of course, we want to make sure that we flush all of our podcasts. Only then we want to move on. And then we're going to start with this batch here. So we don't care if this is first released or this, so these two will be run in parallel. But only after that again we want to move on with the next batch. And here again we don't care which one is the first. And yeah, in the end the dispatch is how this all is being triggered. And in order to see how this works, I have added some info messages to all of those chops here. And on the right here we're going to start Artisan Pale, brand new package by Laravel, which I really love. So, and now we're going to run this command. So we are here inside this command here, release podcast, and now let's run this together. And then on the right, we should see what is happening. So you can see first we're flashing the podcast, then releasing podcast one, releasing podcast two, sending the notification for the first and then for the second podcast. So everything here is working right in this order, but that's just because those are empty and they run almost at the same time. What we can do now in order to show you what's happening here is that I'm going to add here a sleep function. So this means if it's the first podcast, we want to sleep for five seconds. And this should mean that the second podcast should be released first. So in order to do this, I also had to restart my queue workers. And now let's run this again and let's see what's happening here on the right. So first we are flushing the podcast again, which was happening right here then we are sleeping for five seconds and that's when the second podcast was already released and then we're releasing the first one and then the other two chops were also run so yeah this way you could see that these two are actually really running in parallel and the really cool thing about this now is that we have quite a complex setups for when which job is being run but still it looks pretty simple and it's pretty obvious from this new structure to see what is happening. Everything is within a chain, but we also have some batches and I really think it's a great idea to combine those two together. Thank you, Mateus and Taylor for this pull request. Next, we're talking about an addition to jobs where you can now add batches inside chains. Let's take a look. I'm here in a handle payment command where I'm going to start a new database transaction. I have some info messages just so that we know when which part is being run. Then here we would handle our payment, which we don't do here. Then here we're saying that we're dispatching our event, which we do here. And then right before closing, we have another info message so that we know when this is happening here. On the right here, I have already started level pay, just so that we see what's happening when we run our command. So let's do this here. And on the right, we can now see the transaction has started. Then here at this point, we're going to dispatch our event, then here this is triggered. By the way, this is happening because here right at the top, I'm listening for our event. And if this is being triggered, I'm going to send another message here. So this is when our event really was dispatched. And then we're closing the transaction. So everything is happening here in the order in which we see it here. But whenever we are working with a database transaction like here, it's because the things are happening here should be grouped together. So this means if something happens to this payment, if this fails, we maybe don't want to dispatch this event. And now we have a new solution here to make this work in a very easy way. 
So what we can do now here is we can go back to our event and I can implement a new interface called should dispatch after commit. So with that, we're telling that we want our event only to be dispatched after our database transaction was closed. So let's run this now again and let's see if something is different. So here we've started our transaction again. We are here at this point where we're going to dispatch our event, but then the next thing here is closing. So this part here is not really happening because this comes now first and now after closing our event was being really dispatched. So that's exactly what we wanted to do because only after our transaction was closed we want to dispatch our event now and then yeah, listen to it and work on some other tasks for that. So that's pretty cool how this is working. And it was pretty easy by just again adding our new interface should dispatch after commit to our event. But let's also get back here and let's look at a use case you probably would be more interested in because currently it's just happening after the transaction. So for this case, nothing really changes. But what happens if an error occurs here? So let's throw a new exception payment handling fail and yeah in this case we really don't want this to be being dispatched and since this is happening before it yeah should be dispatched but now with our new interface we're also making sure of this let's run this again you can see we started the transaction here we are at the point where we think we would dispatch it but it's not happening and then the payment has failed and our event was not being triggered and that's exactly what you want to do in this case if an error is happening if an exception is being thrown you don't want your event to be triggered and you don't want your listeners to be run and that's exactly what we can do now with this new interface thank you sebastian and last we're now talking about the sleep facade of laravel where there is an until method until now you could only provide an integer with the current timestamp for this method but now you can also provide a string which is pretty handy because sometimes this is stored as a string that's it for this first video of the new edition of what's new in lava i hope you liked it and see you the next time bye